Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out with unbeaten Sam Gilly. Sam, you're fighting Jermaine Camaro, um, who isn't here today. You must have scared him already, I don't know. Um, on Friday night at York Hall. I've seen an interview of you with um, British Boxing News, I believe it was, earlier this week, where you said you feel Camaro might be a good stepping stone towards British title contention. What do you expect to see from him on the night, and why is he the ideal opponent for, for that purpose? Uh, I, th I think he's, he's just one of them... Start he's, like a, he's just such an awkward style. I mean, you, you can have these fighters that are like Route 1, jab right hand down the middle. He comes from so many different angles. It's, it's, it's sometimes harder to beat them fighters than it is to box like a, like a normal upright boxer, obviously, because he, you, he, he don't really know what he's going to do. He throws shots from wide down at his hips, so you can't really tell what he's going to do. You've got to try and work him out while you're in there. But, um, yeah, straight away after this fight, mate, I'll get through this, f uh, figure him out, beat him convincingly, and then I want Southern Areas and uh, start moving on proper. Who is Southern Area champion at your, in your division? Uh, at Walter Way, there's a, a Southern Area fight. You've got Shaquille Day versus Louis Adolfi for the Southern Area title, and the winner, mate, that's what I want. And you said about um, Camaro being really awkward, throwing shots from odd angles, unpredictable. How do you prepare for that in sparring? Like, who do you get in to try and replicate that? Uh, to be f to be fair, just we we've, we've done a bit a bit with a bit with Southpaws, a bit a bit with Orthodox fighters. I've been sparring Ted Cheeseman, Conor Ben. So, I mean, they're, they're pretty much come forward fighters. Camaro's a bit tall on the back foot, but we've been doing a lot of sparring with other lads as well. But we've also brought in some like novice fighters that do things that are a little bit out of the ordinary because. When, when you've got someone that throws that throw a punch from down here and swing it up, so I mean, someone like Ted Cheeseman or Conor Ben ain't really going to do that. They're going to throw. So we've been doing that as well. Been working on defensive stuff with novice fighters. Right outside a pub on a Friday night, that might be the way to prepare. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. I'll take my gum shield down the local next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just tell us a little bit about your background in the sport. So how you first got into it, amateur clubs you trained at, and so on. Uh, I started off well. I started off as every kid does, playing football, and uh, discovered I had. Uh, zero talent in football so I uh, decided to go down to the local boxing gym which was Wolf and Forest at the time. I stayed there till I was about 15. I had uh, 30 odd amateur fights for them uh, and then I moved on to Tottenham and Enfield and I was there till I was about 20, 21 and then uh, yeah I, I, I had no right amateur career. I weren't like to the heights of GB and stuff like that which is why I want to do the traditional route of Southern Era and stuff to learn as much as I can because I need to learn while I'm fighting as a pro. I've not got that 300 fight experience like I'm saying. Um, but yeah, so that, that was pretty much my amateur career. Obviously, it all fell into, fell into the background when you turn 18, start working, earn a few quid. But then I met uh, Rod, and he literally said, if you want to work hard at this and you want to dedicate your life to it, I can give you everything you've wanted since you was 11. And now I'm standing on an MTK show, fighting on the undercard to Davis Vasquez, ex-world champion. You've got a British title fight on, and I'm talking about fighting for titles myself, which is... If you'd have told 11-year-old me that, mate, I would have, uh, I'd have bit your arm off for it. So. I think I'd have just wanted a PlayStation when I was 11. But um, Are you still based in that area where you grew up and where you went to those amateur clubs? Do you still live around there? Yeah, I still live in Walthamstow, mate. Yeah, but I, I, was born, uh, I was born in Leighton, uh, Whips Cross. And the uh, first day my mum took me back to my nan's in Walthamstow and I've been here ever since. <laughs> Parked up in Walthamstow. I can't get out of there. Famous market, of course. You ever done a few stints there? Yeah, my granddad used to find a fruit stall on the market. My granddad had a, a leather belt stall in Walthamstow yeah. Market. Yeah, just outside the pie and mash shop. So, and that's usually my first port call after a fight, straight into the pie and mash shop for a two and two. Um, but yeah, my granddad was down the bottom, and uh, I live just off Palmerston Road, the one that runs down the middle, breaks up the Sainsbury's in the bottom half. Yeah, I live just off that. Big E17 fan, or is you a bit too young for that? Uh, my dad used to, he was, uh, you know, is, is it John that's the roofer? My old man used to work with him. My, my old man by trade is a roofer, yeah. So, yeah, he done a bit of roofing with him. So, but obviously, the only time I really hear E17 is at uh, Christmas. So. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Um, you said you want the winner of um, Shaquille Day against Louis Adolphe. Who do you fancy in that one? <laughs> Put you on the spot. Yeah, put me on the spot. Yeah, um, to be fair, Louis Adolphe has got more experience. I think he's a, he, he's a better boxer. But listen, Shaquille Day's an undefeated fighter, so they're both just going to... In, in them sort of fights, you don't know what's going to happen there. you got two under... Well, not Louis Adolphe, he, won, uh, he lost the disqualification, I think, if I'm right. But you've got two fighters that are, that are hungry for a belt, so let's, it'll be interesting to see what happens. But regardless of what happens, I want that winner. The next British title fight you'll wait is uh, Chris Jenkins defending against Liam Taylor, I believe. Yes. How far do you see yourself away from that sort of level? End of next year? Yeah, end of next year. I'll, I'll be 25 next year. No, I'll be 25 this year, 26 next year. So it's, it'll, be t it'll be time to start knocking on that door and start shouting people out, whoever's got that pretty belt, mate. 
And just lastly, before, uh, so people who are interested in you or watched Fight on Friday want to know a bit more about you, how can they find you on social media? What are your main handles, platforms? Uh, Instagram, Sam Gilly. Uh, Twitter, Sam Gilly Boxing. And just normal Sam Gilly on Facebook. Just get at me. Yeah, just keep it nice and simple. And uh, yeah, just have a laugh and have a few fights. Eh? Really appreciate your time. We won't uh, ask you to stay another day. We really appreciate <laughs> <laughs> it. Had to do it. Had to do it. <laughs> Couldn't help it. Brilliant. Um, but appreciate it. Best luck Friday. We'll be watching. So good luck. Cheers, mate.